Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks Plays Naval Action and in this episode, which is a little bit older one, we will be taking a look at two ships, the frigate and the pirate frigate. And this is a little bit, well, a lot older video. It's a video be even before uh, the crew allocations. So sorry for an older content, but um, this was at the time when I still had the Pirate Frigate and I realized just that I have never posted a video on the Pirate Frigate, apart from the very, very short review. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Frigate and the Pirate Frigate, because they are both based on the same model, which was one of the old uh, Russian sailing ships Cherubim. Uh, I don't know sadly much about uh, the Cherubim, I wasn't able to find any good source information on it. So I will go actually uh, directly into the comparison of the two. Now, Frigate as well as the Pirate Frigate are designed to be all-rounders and they're designed to be 12-pounder frigates, which sit somewhere in the mid-range of the fifth rates. So that means that they will be stronger than the Cerberus, Renomi and Surprise, but weaker than, for example, I don't know, maybe Santa Cis or Essex or Trincomalee or the newer, newly added HMS Indefatigable and uh, Endymion. So, uh, standing-wise, uh, Frigate has a battle rating of 170, while the fr Pirate Frigate has 180. And that allocation is mainly due to the crew allocation, I would say, uh, because the frigate has 280 crew, while the pirate frigate has 300. Uh, both of them have actually the worst turn rate of almost all uh, ships. I mean, even the Trincomalee and the Essex turn faster when it comes to... Uh, sorry, not the speed, the, the turn rate, the speed. So they're actually among the slowest. And when it comes to the turn rate, yeah, I mean, Bell Pool is the worst, but Frigate and Pirate Frigate are not too far behind. So they are not fast and they're not maneuverable. So what makes them kind of so special? And that's actually decent armor and even better armament. Now, of the two, the frigate is slightly better armored, while the pirate frigate is slightly better armed. And that we can take into consideration once we actually go and check the broadside weight, which for the frigate equals... I mean, frigate and the pirate frigate have the same broadside weight when talking from, for the carronades. But when talking about cannons, uh, the Pirate Frigate has one distinct advantage, and that is actually the ability to mount 12-pounder cannons on her weather deck. So the both ship can actually mount on the gun deck 18-pounder cannons or 32-pounder carronades, and 26 of them to be exact. However, the Pirate Frigate can mount... 12 pounder cannons on the weather deck when the pirate when the regular frigate can only mount six pounders which make her slightly better arm better shot etc etc um okay when we consider other qualities i mean compared to the other ships they have no obvious um, signs and not obvious weaknesses so Frigate is good all around, no obvious strengths and not obvious weaknesses, except for the no stern chasers. And the pirate frigate has um, better armament on the top deck, and, but it's the slowest fifth rate, basically. Uh, also, when we are talking about the profile, and I mean their target profile, so how big they are when you're trying to shoot at them, they're almost among the best. The only one that has the smaller footprint than them is the Cerberus. So even the Renomi and the Surprise, shockingly enough, are bigger targets than the Frigate or the Pirate Frigate. So that's definitely something to be considered. Um, okay, so this is actually a brief discussion. So we said, in this case, when I'm sailing the Pirate Frigate, 
Uh, it also makes worth mentioning that the pirate frigate is not basically able to uh, craft. You cannot craft a pirate frigate. What you can with a pirate frigate is you can buy it off the NPC in the pirate port. So it means its sailing characteristics will be weaker. But I mean, given that it's so unique and not so frequent, it gives it a little bit of the cool factor. So, let's uh, take a look a little bit into the fight. I'm single-handedly fighting against two. And we have over here a top barrette, I guess. And I'm kind of just pounding with him with some cannons. And if I'm not mistaken, he is sailing the Cerberus. So it could be that I'm fighting against two Cerberuses. I have to check what, who, what is the other guy sailing. Okay, hard to port. And I mean, the goal of it is just to pound it with some hot lead as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Because for me, the main point of this previews is to show off the, sh show off the ship first. And then win the battle second, if at all possible. So, let's see. Let him turn a little bit. And a little bit more, a little bit more. Great, and fire. Plywood Simulator 101. Reload shock, very nice. Okay, hard to hard to starboard, and basically, as you can see, I am weaving behind him. I have the wind gauge, so I dictate the terms of engagement, pretty much. He's just trying to sail away, but I mean, as you can see, I'm sailing straight for him. To present a little bit lower target and turning on the shallow angle, I'm waiting until I get him into the right position to be able to fire. Which will be very, very soon, hopefully. Fire. I mean, only six shots because the other ones haven't reloaded yet. And... Fire. It is only in the post commentary that I've noticed that I'm firing in the random shot mode. So yeah, that's definitely something to be considered, so... Okay, bow chasers, chain. I mean, even if I can do a little bit of damage, it still merits fighting, so yeah. Okay, let's see if we can get a nice rake on this guy. Or maybe not, maybe even just a straight up broadside, why not? But, um, yeah, fire. Both of his... Oh, and we have started up with a fire, or either that, or his captain has forgotten to turn off the barbecue. Either way, his ass is on fire. Top barret. Yeah, sure. Okay, hard to starboard. Now I'm turning into the fight and I, this is an engagement I don't want to be in because I'm going against two ships. But given the, the sorry state of the first one, I mean it's a calculated risk that I'm willing to take. And the other one is coming from the other side, so let's see what colors are you flying, matey. I'd say... Oh, no, this is not uh, even... Okay, this is a Mercury. Oh, man. Well, in this case, let me show you what balls we provide. And fire. Very nice. Okay, so basically, I guess I'm fighting one Cerberus and one Mercury. Well, that makes things a lot more, well, manageable, so to say. So, I uh, might as well first get rid of the... Uh, Cerberus, simply because due to the fact that it's a bigger target. It's easier to aim at it. Nothing, no other reasons. Okay, in irons now, turning, and I might actually fire a broadside at this guy while I'm doing so. Let me see, and... Fire. Fire. Decent amount of shots, reload shock, Sure. 
I mean, I mean, I outweigh him and outgun him like severely. So I'm pretty sure that this guy will pose no threat to us whatsoever. I do have some leaks, and um, yeah. I did pop up a repair, so I think pretty sure that this will get fixed pretty quickly. I'm not overly concerned. I'm getting closer on the Mercury, and I mean, he's also, his caliber guns are a little bit lower, so I'm gonna press the advantage of my high, higher caliber guns to force him into the submission, and he's coming, she's showing me his heels. Fire. I mean, from this distance, I have no problems penetrating that armor, and yeah, definitely waiting. Just just waiting for my gun deck cannons to reload, which I think will spell his doom very quickly. But let's see, and fire, fire. I wanted to take some pretty pictures, but then he sailed away. Boo-hoo. Okay. Um, okay, so there's the Cerberus as well. Which means I this is the direction I want to take. I don't see them as that big of a threat now. I thought I was fighting two Cerberuses. I mean, even then, their lower caliber guns are not really match. But then again, Pirate Frigate, as you remember when I mentioned in the review, has a little bit weaker armor than the Frigate, so that's still something to take into account. And my cannons aren't reloaded enough so that I could actually give this guy a hammering that he was supposed to get. No matter, but I am actually sailing hoping my cannons will reload in time for the Cerberus though then again maybe not I think given that my cannons are still on reload I'll actually rather turn hard to starboard and fire at well either one of these guys Both of them, I mean, maybe even better the Cerberus one. Yeah, I think he might be a juicier target. Come on. And fire. A little bit correction and fire. Some good, hi some good hits there. And I might actually consider hard to port this time. So, ah, uh, so he will be passing on my starboard side. Well, in that case, I might want to turn hard to starboard and maybe even slow down because I want to be passing after his rear. He is faster than me, we have to remember that, which means that he will probably overtake me and that gives me a chance to go a little bit more into the wind and hopefully present him with my port broadside. That's the plan anyway. Terrible shooting on my part. Okay, come on, come on, damn you. A little bit more, I mean it's nice angle, nice everything, but I want a little bit more and fire, come on little bit more correction and fire I'll take what I can get and then now hard to hard to port I don't want to be actually I don't want hard to port yet fully because then I would be again going into the irons but a little bit to port would be fine because that would give me an opportunity to stern rake him all the cannons reloaded, beautiful, getting ready, and fire. Okay, that takes care of his port side armor and structure, which means that, uh, yeah, more shots here, he will be taking leaks, that's for sure. And time to actually hit the starboard rudder and 
let's see what we can do about the mercury as well. So like I said, Pirate Frigate, yeah, good armament, unique look, that's definitely something I liked about it. And I actually liked sailing with it before, that was before the time then, before I actually got the Trincomaly. Trincomaly is a ship that required skillful sailing, but still it's kind of, it's fun to play. Okay, oh don't worry sir, you're gonna get nice healthy fire. Yep, definitely not all of them hit, but still I'm pretty happy with the result anyway. I mean, how differently those ships play than the Bolognas that I... I have taken in the this, like, last fights that I was recording. I mean, it's a huge difference. Okay, come on, reload, damn you. These cannons are so slow to reload. Yeah, like I said, by the time they reload... Uh, he will be far, far away and I will be an old man. Okay. But we have a beautiful dawn on us, which means that it will be time to actually show these ships in all their glory. As they are giant, gently sinking beneath the waves. Okay, yeah, some chain shot, maybe give him some sail damage. 96% sails, that's pretty good in my book. Let's see we can, if we can present the broadside. Fire one, good, fire all. I can see some good shots, but then again, I mean, he's structure is still holding, I'm impressed, I can tell you that much. And the other guy is clearly in irons, which is a good thing, which actually means that I can pass on either side of him whichever I want, and I want to pass, I want to actually go a little bit harder to starboard, and I want to take, hit him in the side where, which, where he has lost his hull integrity, that would hopefully help him to sink faster. And... I'm really hope that this broadside will spell the end of our fellow over here in the Cerberus. However, I mean, we can always turn hard to starboard and give him one final broadside that would be the final nail in the coffin, but we'll see if that's really needed. Might as well pop up a repair. Okay. Yeah, Cerberus is definitely slowly but surely sinking beneath the waves. Which means we can actually now start focusing on the Mercury as he comes in. Fire. Five shots to the hull and I'm waiting for my 13 cannons to reload. Fire. And hold on, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, and fire. Some of them, I, what actually what bothers me is that the Mercury has such low profile that some of my shots just go over him, and I did aim for the waterline to be exact, so yeah. But then again, if I turn a little bit to the port, yeah, you can fire up my nose but I'll be firing up your eyes pretty soon so yeah and fire 
Okay, this was beautiful. Okay, hard to port. Hard to port. And our buddy in the Cerberus has long gone and visited Davy Jones. And basically, see, he was just basically the scout. He went to Davy Jones and told him to wait for Top de Leon because that one is coming there shortly. Riding on top of my cannonballs. Something like cannonball surfing, or I guess. Well, as soon as I managed to hit him, you know. The biggest problem problem with Mercury isn't actually, you know, to sink it, but to hit it. Because it's so small, or and so lying so low in the water, when you're aiming for its hull, you're constantly missing. So, yeah. And I guess that would be especially a problem in the ships that heal a lot more than the pirate frigate, so... Fire. But once you get it so nicely positioned, then you want to take every possible example advantage that you can. And I basically I stop side by, by side of him because I have better armor, I have thicker armor, and I have better cannons. Which means if I just sail beside him, we can exchange broadsides and I guess I will win. But then again, what would be the fun in that? So, with that thought in mind, I am thinking about giving him a nice stern rake instead. Well, maybe not a stern rake or... I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Either a stern rake or just direct shot to the starboard. I think I'll go for the starboard shot. Overshooting and fire. Okay, some pretty picks time. Conquest for Arena started, beautiful. By the way guys, given his status, I'm pretty sure we're coming up on the end of the episode. So like if you like, hit subscribe for more naval action content that is coming soon. Yeah, and he sunk. And until next episode, thank you very much for watching. This is Groundworks, signing off.